Hello everyone, um, I'm back today and what I'm going to discuss today is kind of uh, some basics regarding using the program um, Sequence Builder or Seek Builder. Um, this is the program I use for my DNA constructions, my primer designs, and uh, for anything else that involves sequences. So because I use it so extensively, I figure I should maybe go over some basics um, with uh, in this video today because it's a very common program so some of you guys <coughs> might be using it right now or will be using it or maybe some of you who are interested and just kind of want to know um, some of the basics of the program so let's start it up sequence builder so use this program is licensed through the university so I'm pretty sure most universities have this license so just contact you know your PI or whomever and they'll give you like the password and the uh, address and everything that you need to activate it but anyway so this is sequence builder and this is a program that is used very commonly in uh, cloning projects so for example I'm just gonna open my PFAS back vector and here you see that the sequence of the vector is laid out from the 5 prime to uh, 3 prime direction and what you can do is modify the sequence by just simply clicking here for example anywhere in the sequence you can insert bases you know or whatever like if I want to insert like GGG whatever then that's fine you know I'll shift everything but anyway so you can directly edit the sequence just by clicking you know at different positions you can one really good feature is that you can go to the uh, <clears throat> where is it? Oh yeah, enzyme displayed, and you can filter different uh, restriction enzymes by you know by the companies, by uh, you know whether it's a five prime or three prime overhang, whether they're like blunt and blunt cutters. So one of the most uh, important features is the unique size one. So you click on it, and then it will show you all the uh, unique sites within any piece of DNA that you have opened up. So this is the PFAS back vector and obviously as you can see near the bottom here, whoops, sorry about that, um, near this bottom here you have the uh, multiple cloning sites here. So that's one very useful feature. Another thing is you can, let's see, go to residues, you want to see the bottom strand, just click check mark the bottom strand option and there you have it, you have the bottom strand, strand of the sequence. Um, you can do open reading frames, both top and bottom strands. So, you know, there's six possible open reading frames, right? Any DNA sequence, right? Because, you know, three DNA uh, bases determines a codon once you transcribe that to RNA. So you have three possible positions where you read from when you are translating. And then you know you, have, you can go from one direction. You can also go from the other direction as well. So, total of six possible combinations. Um, just let me uncheck these. It's kind of messy, but yeah, that's another very unique thing that you definitely want to be checking for open reading frames when you are designing uh, projects for cloning, because you want to make sure everything is in frame. Your insert anyway that will be translated properly. Another feature that I like to use is the circular map feature and it will basically display your DNA in a vector form whether you know originally it was or wasn't. So this is very useful, well first of all this is PFAS back so obviously it is circular anyway, it's, it's a vector. So here you can just kind of see where the multiple cloning sites are and all that stuff. And of course, you know, you can go ahead and label if you want to, you know, the ampicillin resistance size, you know, the or the origins, the, uh, you know, S, the uh, polydelination signal. I mean, there's, you know, more features to the vector that it's not shown because it's because, you know, the program doesn't know it's a vector, but we know it is because obviously, we you know, we downloaded a sequence, but you can label stuff on here and it'll show up on the map. Um, I'm just going to open up a different DNA to show you what I mean by that. So this is the uh, example sequence I was using for my cloning project. I'm not sorry, not cloning project. Yeah, my cloning videos, and it has the open reading frame, and it has like restriction sites marked out and stuff. If you go to 
Um, if you got a circular map, oops. Yeah, if you got a circular, oh, oh, sorry about that. If you got a circular map, then it'll show you um, the sites here. Why isn't it showing the features though? That's strange. Oh right. I think it's because I don't have the uh, open reading frame selected. Mm, no, I do have selected. Strange. Hold on. Um, it's definitely selected. And then maybe it doesn't show the um, open reading frame, but it should show the uh, the marks I made though. Uh, one second, guys. Sorry about this. Let's see. I uncheck that. Features displayed, yes. If you go to circular map. I don't know why it doesn't. That's strange. Oh no, it does. Sorry. It, it's right here and here. This is so short. That's why you really can't see. Okay. I got you. So it doesn't display the open reading frames on the circular map, but it does display any features you mark up. So for example, let, let me just do this. So if I want to highlight a big chunk of DNA, like here, I'll go to features, new feature, right? You want to label this as something. Let's just call it, I don't know, experiment. And then now I go to circular map. And then there we go. See, that's exactly where I highlighted it relative to the whole entire sequence. It shows up. See, the uh, the places I marked before here and here, marking the Ecor one and <clears throat> Xba one sites, they're there, just very tiny bits. But this is the big chunk that I just um, highlighted. So that pretty much brings the feature features option, which I like to use a lot, is to just annotate annotate um, specific areas of my DNA that um, I'm interested in. Um, you can also just delete these features if you don't want them anymore. Just go to like delete feature and just click yes and then it'll be gone. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the basics of um, Sequence Builder. There's other functions as well, but I don't really use them. I guess depending on your project or whatever, you might be using programs, this program or another program like this very extensively with you know other kind of modifications. Um, but I'm not, you know, I just need it for cloning, so I don't need, need to use a lot of the advanced features. Oh, another thing you can do is uh, translations. Again, you can do, you know, there's three frames of translations, right? There's six possible overreading frames, six possible uh, translations. You can do full translation, and he'll give you, and they'll give you all six reading frames and what they'll translate to. And uh, obviously, we already know which reading frame we want to translate as. It's number one. So here we go, starting here, methionine, start with the arrow, which does designate the first ATG. And then it just keeps reading, and this is the uh, amino acid sequence that this construct, once expressed in cells, that it will start spitting out. And it should stop here, right? Yeah, stop colon right here, TAA. So that's another very useful feature, is to show the uh, translation. Um, so uh, amino acid sequence. So I'll click that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The basics of sequence builder. Not difficult really at all. It's very uh, user user friendly, I think. Very intuitive. So that's pretty much it. Okay, guys. Well, I'll see you next time. I'm signing off.